Well, good morning, church. Good morning and welcome to the one service here at the Court of Oak and Bill and Wyandotte at the First United Methodist Church of Wyandotte. We'd like to welcome everybody here who's joined us uh, in person in the sanctuary as well as anyone watching us during our live stream uh, this morning and perhaps you've caught us later this week uh, online while you're surfing there. Again, welcome to everyone. If you're a visitor, we'd especially like to extend we would especially like to extend a special welcome to you. And we ask for everyone here to please use the ritual friendship booklets that are in the pew. Please fill those out. The white side is for uh, the members, uh, blue side is for visitors. Please fill that out and pass that down the pew, if you will. And once it gets to the end, you can pass it on and just kind of a cheat note. You can look to see the name of the person next to you if you can't remember who it was. And then we put that back. Uh, next, so uh, I know God uses many paths to lead us where He would have us to be, and uh, we're just thankful for uh, you chose this path this morning. And we hope that you always feel welcome, always feel blessed, and always, always feel at home here at First Church. Now, before we continue our service of praise and worship, we would, however, uh, like to give you a quick reminder of a few of the opportunities available this week. The first is as we continue our April mission, the Redbird mission, the missions at Redbird are categorized in five general areas, education, health, home improvement, community outreach, and economic opportunity. This much we are helping to support the great work that is being done by the Redbird mission. If you feel called to support this mission, please use one of your mission envelopes in your packet or just any envelope in the pew in front of you and just mark mission or sometime during the week, use our QR codes that are available as well. Next is church outdoor cleanup. The time has come to get outside and clean up around the church. The old is gone and the new is appearing. Our trustee committee has done a wonderful, wonderful job so far of uh, being good stewards by taking care of our church. But sometimes we just need uh, a few more extra people to help them out. On May 4th, that's this coming Saturday at 9 a.m., we invite you to join and help Clean up the landscape. Bring your garden gloves, garden kneelers, rakes, shovels, wheelbarrows, and help us spruce up our church. Lunch will be provided as well for the workers. Next is a spring music concert. This is our first announcement of this. The date is set for our spring music concert, May 19th at 7 p.m. The night will be one of joyous celebration through song and music. This is a great opportunity to come hear the talent that God has blessed this church with, uh, church with and invite some of your friends and neighbors to experience music in a, a casual yet blessed setting. And the cost is something I believe we can all afford as there is no cost other than your attendance. Last is the zero K for child hunger relief. Each day, 500,000 children in Michigan go hungry. That's half a million. Despite the efforts of many dedicated organizations and agencies, food insecurity remains a serious problem in Michigan. Each year, the United Methodist Church sponsors a run, walk, ride event to raise awareness and money for child hunger relief. We currently have six walkers and one four-legged family friend member signed up to do the 5K on either May 25th or the 26th. You may sponsor one of the walkers who just donate to the cause. A reminder that 100% of this money is donated right back into our local community here in which we serve. It's not too late to register to walk if you are so uh, inclined. Just sign up on the volunteer boards that are located just outside the sanctuary. Again, welcome to First Church and let's continue to worship. Running a Christian race is a lot like running a marathon. It takes perseverance, focus, and discipline to cross the finish line. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 12:1 to run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Just like a marathon, the Christian race can be long and difficult. There will be times when we feel tired and want to give up. But we must keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. He is our strength and our champion. Running this Christian race means staying committed to God's plan for our lives. It means trusting in Him even when we don't understand what's happening around us. 
We must remain faithful to the end, no matter the circumstances. We must also keep ourselves spiritually fit by reading the Bible, praying, and being a part of a community of believers. Just like a marathon runner trains their body, we must train our hearts and minds to stay focused on God. And just like a marathon, a Christian race has a finish line. And let us always remember that we are not running alone, for God is with us every step of the way. Well, good morning, and uh, invite you to stand and join your voices with ours as we sing your praises to the Lord.
Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord together with our brothers and sisters in Christ this Sunday. Thank you for coming out and worshiping here at Wyandotte First this morning. Today we have a special Sunday. Uh, today we are bringing two of our young people, two who have been uh, consecrated to the Lord in their baptism as children. We're bringing them forward into the full life of our church. They have uh, went through a, a ton, some classes and have uh, have talked about their faith and are ready to make that public profession here today. So it is a special Sunday, a good day to be here at Wyandotte First. As we, uh, as we worship this day, um, the fact that there's no sunshine out, you know, a lot of times the sun kind of livens me up for worship uh, on the morning, but uh, today the sun is kind of light out there, but I know the Lord is, is out there, and that God is good, amen? amen. And He is here with us and shining upon us as we worship this morning, and He's got something special for us, the message, the music through prayers that are going to be lifted up today. So shall we now turn to God for our morning prayers as we continue along our time of worship. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the joy of new beginnings. Lord, we thank you for the hope that we have when we look upon our young people, Lord, and we see them taking their faith on as their own, Lord, as they have those experiences of faith that let them know, Lord, that you are alive, that you love them, your plans for them, Lord. They, as we look upon our young people, it reminds us of those moments in our lives, Lord, when, when we've had those times, when we've had our eyes open to the things that you are doing. And Lord, we, we thank you for you've been so good to us. Lord, there are, are moments in our lives when we have wandered far from the path, and we have taken our own plans in life, where we have wandered from you, and yet, Lord, you are that loving Father calls us back as prodigals, back to the plans that you have for us, the hopes that you have for us. And, and Lord, we, we thank you and praise you for we have discovered in our lives the joy of faithful living, of, of living out, Lord, the vows that we made to follow you, Lord. And sometimes even when, when we wake up and we want to do our own thing, yet Lord, we know the path that you call us to when you choose that path. We have experienced your blessings in such rich ways, Lord. And there is nothing better than following your Son, Jesus Christ. There is nothing better in this life than having our lives, Lord, in harmony with the plans that you have made for us, Lord. It's in that precious space that we experience the glory of this life that you created us for. And we thank you and we praise you. Lord, I, I just lift up heaven. I lift up Lauren and I pray, Lord, that as we have this service and we celebrate their, their professions, Lord, as we celebrate their coming into the life of this church, Lord, that they will know the love that this congregation has for them. And that, Lord, they will continue to feel the nurturing spirit that is in this place. To be all glory and praise. Lord, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Lord, we thank you that we have found the truth life. And Lord, that as we keep our eyes on Jesus, Lord, there is no grave that can hold us. That there is no pain that will keep us, Lord, from the joy of life. That, that Lord, there is nothing that will separate us from your awesome and your powerful love. We thank you and we praise you. Lord, open up our lives. Help us, Lord, to be a sanctuary of praise to you on this day, that as we lift up our praises, we will experience your joy anew in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
to continue along in our service is our opportunity and our joy to bring our tithes and offerings to the Lord, to bring back to Him a portion of that which He has blessed us with, to bring it to dedicate to the glory of the kingdom of God. As we continue along, I'd like to invite our to the Lord and to wait on us for our offerings. So the man of God was angry with him and said, You should have struck five or six times. 
Then you should have struck Aram until you would have destroyed it. But now you shall strike Aram only three times. Elijah died, and they buried him. Now the bands of the Moabites would invade the land in the spring of the year. As they were burying a man, behold, they saw a marauding band, and they cast the man into the grave of Elisha. And when the man touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. A new scripture lesson, perhaps, for many of us. A uh, wonderful story, though, that I uh, feel excited to share on this confirmation Sunday. And a wonderful message for us as we look at the life of one of uh, God's great men of faith, Elisha, and hear um, the wisdom that he had to share uh, with the kings of Israel and with the country and the people who would follow um, after God in this world. Let us now pray, shall we pray? God, I thank you for your holy word, Lord. I thank you for those new stories that intrigue us, Lord, where we hear the story and we go, what's happening here, Lord? Speak it afresh to us this day, Lord. I pray your blessing on this reading of your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, Confirmation Sunday is a big day. It is a day where young people come forward and they share the fact that they've heard the call and they have decided to follow Jesus. They've heard the call and they've decided that this is the path that they are on. And they come forward and they share that. Now, the truth is, as we know as believers, that this is sort of a daily thing, right? Jesus tells us that it's a daily thing to take up our cross and to follow after him. And so as, as big as this day might seem, more than another, uh, it's another day in life. It is a day where um, vows that were made at your baptism to share with you the Christian faith and you have seen that over the years since your baptism. And there I know have been special moments in your lives where you've heard God saying, follow me. Come, I will show you the way. And today is another day in hearing that call and responding to it. Following after Jesus is the greatest thing in this world. Amen. If you have any questions, Lauren or, or Heather, about what it means to people, I would encourage you to go up and talk with the members of the church about what Jesus means to them, where it is in their life that Jesus has come and has, has encouraged them along the path in difficult times, where God has opened up new doors, new understandings, and taken, taken uh, them to new heights in their faith. Following after Jesus is where we begin this day. But as we continue on, I want to move one slide further there, if we can. Catch up here. Today, I want us to do more than just think about following Jesus. I want us to think about having this life and living it in a passionate way. Because when we follow Jesus, we should be excited about following him. We should be excited about the good things that he does for us. You know people that get excited, overly excited about silly things in life? Any of you ever met any of those type of people? So this picture is my college roommate. Now my college roommate um, came into my room the first day that I came to school. I was all excited because I had some Christian tapes, back in those days, cassettes, that were sitting on my shelf and, and he's, are you a Christian? Yeah, I'm a Christian, are you a Christian? Yeah, and it started out a wonderful friendship. Uh, with my friend Gary. And Gary um, has actually been a youth pastor for several years. He's currently working at a, a college where he's recruiting a um, person for the college. But Gary, over the last couple of years, has taken on this whole other persona in his life. And it has been very timely. Uh, he is one of the Lions super fans. And I keep seeing pictures of him. Um, this week with the draft, I saw him in the press and saw things of him. 
And one thing about Barry is that when he went into the lines, he went all the way in. I don't know that I can understand that. Or the cowboy had a pretty big uh, to just celebrate something as goofy as a football team uh, that, after many years of being in the gutter, we're glad that they're finally uh, doing something good. And it's a little more exciting to be a super fan, but I think Gary would have been a super fan even if they were going to 16 this year. For the last couple of years, that's been exciting for him. Well, do we have that kind of excitement for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Could you be a super fan for Jesus? Could you get passionate about this path that God has laid out for you to follow in this life? When we look in our scriptures, we have so many stories of, of people that have encountered God and they've changed their life forever and it's made them passionate for this new path that they are on. Today's story that we read um, is the tail end of Elijah's story. And I gotta tell you, Elisha was an amazing prophet of God. Elisha um, was the, the, the person who took the mantle from Elijah, one of the other great prophets of, of uh, Israel. And Elijah um, found Elisha working out in a field. He was out working as a farmer. He was uh, tilling the field, preparing it, making a daily living the way that, that he did. But when Elisha saw Elijah in that moment, his life was changed. We hear of his call in the, it's actually first Kings chapter 19, verses 19 to 21. But in that story, Elisha, when he encounters Elijah, his life is changed forever as he understands that Elijah at that time is needing a friend, is needing a companion, is maybe even needing somebody to hand off this ministry as Elijah sees the end of his ministry coming. Elijah, earlier in the 19th chapter of 1 Kings, was very discouraged because Elijah had done great things for God and yet it didn't seem to Elijah that it was making a lot of difference in the world. He went up against the prophets of Baal and in the midst of that, he had this great victory over the prophets of Baal. And he thought that, that would turn Israel back, their hearts back to the Lord. And yet the queen of Israel at that time was so angry that she put Elijah under a, a death warrant. And so Elijah ran off into the cave and cried out to God, just keep, there's nothing. I've done all this for you, and yet here I am all the time. And God said, good now. And shortly after that, at the end of the 19th chapter, God introduces Elijah to Elisha. And in the midst of that, there's this Holy Spirit moment that's going on where the, the spirit that God has put into Elijah becomes evident to Elijah. And Elijah hands off his mantle to Elisha. And Elisha, at that moment, in case you wondered if Elisha was the right person to do that, he, he went and he took his cart that he'd been using for the farming that he was doing. And he, he took the oxen that he'd been using to, to plow that field. And he took them all and he chopped them all up and he offered them up to God as a burnt sacrifice to God. There was no turning back for Elisha. When Elijah had experienced the, the path that God had for him through, through this prophet of Elijah that had told him that, 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 that God had plans for him, Elisha followed with all of his heart. He was passionate. And as you read the stories of Elisha and, and Kings, you start to hear of a man who's, who's on fire for God, who's, who's got this burning desire within him to see people who are lost turn back to God to see a nation that is lost to turn their hearts back to God. Elijah, Elisha, just like his predecessor Elijah, was an important advisor to the kings of Israel. And Elisha became very important to King Joash in Israel. And Joash wanted the, the protection the blessing, the direction that Elisha 
that God and Elisha's God was able to offer to Israel. Joash wanted that for the people of Israel. He had seen uh, and known through their history of the waywardness of the hearts of the people of the, of the kings of Israel. And, a lot, and Joash wanted that for, for Israel. He wanted them to come under God's protection. And so Elisha went to him, and Elisha told him, yes, God will, God will give you great victory. But then he asked Elijah, he asked Joash to do some unusual things. There were some bow and there was bow and some arrows over there in the, in the room that the king was in in the palace. And in that moment, God had a parable to tell Joash. He had a metaphor to sort of show Joash what his plans were for the people that they were faithful to God. They lived out their life and lived out their lives following what God called them to do. And Elisha tells Joash to take an arrow and to point it out the window and to let it go. And, and he tells him about the victory this promises. But then he asks Joash to go back to his holder of arrows and to, to take them and to knock them on the floor. And Joash, when he does this, he, he, he knocks three of the arrows on the floor. He prepares three of the arrows to shoot off into the air. He, he prepares three of the arrows to, to do what it was that God asked him to do. But the problem was there were five or six arrows that were in that holder. And in the midst of that moment, as Joash stopped short of emptying the quiver of arrows. It angers Elisha. He looks and he sees God's favor falling away from Joash. He sees that Joash, in this hope that he had had for his people and this thought that he had to, to follow God, it, it, it wasn't passionate enough. It didn't go all of the way. He was frustrated as he looked upon Joash and the fact that Joash left arrows in quiver. And he knew that, that was a bad sign for Israel, that the victories that they needed to have to feel secure in their land, that they weren't going to come because it wasn't an all-in with God. And that anger and frustrated Elijah, as he's sitting there, just so happens to be on his deathbed. As he sits there preparing to go back to God, he has lived out this life of passion, and he has tried to infuse that into all who he's ministered to. To see those who fall short, it breaks Elijah's heart. There's a scripture in Revelation that as a kid, I, as a young person, as a youth, it, it, it spoke to me. It, it told me about my need to be passionate for God. In, in the, the third chapter of Revelation, in the 15th and 16th verses, God is sharing, Jesus is sharing a revelation with, the, with John the Revelator to give a message to a church in Laodicea. And this church in Laodicea um, seems to have a lot of what it needs, and yet it has to take that last step, kind of like King Joash. It's leaving arrows in the quiver. And this is the message that Jesus tells John to share with the people of Laodicea. He says, I know your deeds. I know your deeds. That you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. It's a tough condemnation to hear from Jesus, to hear about the fact that in our lives that when we are lukewarm, that it's, it's, not, it's not enough, that we're leaving things on the table, that we are not getting all that God would have for us in our lives. And, and when John shares that with people of Laodicea, I wonder what their response is. 
I wonder if in that moment they, they feel a, a moment of repentance like the people of Nineveh when Jonah comes and, and they return back to the Lord and they want to, they want to become passionate again for God. They're so, so easy in this world to lose our passion. And it's something that we have to protect in our lives. We have to have moments of celebration like the ones that Heather and Lauren are having today that, that remind us and encourage us along our path. But in the dry days, we have to know that God is there and that we just need to keep seeking, continue to push harder, continue to dive in to what God's plans are for us. The message that Elisha had for Joash is say nothing. In this life, you got one life. Did you hear at the end of the story, it's a strange ending to the story where, um, where a, a dead man is thrown into Elisha's reign. And the spirit of Elisha, even after he has passed on, is enough to raise this man from the dead, the spirit that God has put into him. Elisha lived his life in a way where he saved nothing. He lived it right to the end, doing what it was that God called him to do. When challenges had come his way, he didn't turn his back on God, but he kept pursuing what the thing was that God was asking him to do. And, and when he saw others that were wanting to do that, he wanted to, to share that. And when they fell short, his heart was broken. As we are here today for confirmation, I encourage you to say nothing, to keep pushing through in this life. When challenges come your way, when joy is coming your way, don't forget that those joys come from the Lord. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. It will be the, the strength that will carry you in this life through the challenges that come your way. Through, it will be the joy that will carry you through the questions that come. When you have paths that come and you can recognize there are different ways you could go, God will be with you. In that moment, turn it over to God. Listen to Him for the plans that He has for you. And pursue that with your life. And in a moment when you might feel like all is lost, turn to God and surrender all. And recognize that with Jesus, no, things are never lost. That oftentimes with Jesus, in the darkest moments is when Jesus does His greatest things in your life. He will carry you through. In this world, politicians will fail you, sports teams will fail you, friends will fail you. Everything in this life that, that we have is all infected with a little bit of imperfection. And there are always those moments where, where things will let you down in this life. But you have a Lord and Savior who will never let you down. A Lord and Savior who walks with you through the things that you go through in this life. And he has great plans for you. So pursue it with all that you have. Go after it and never leave an arrow in the quiver. Amen. Shall we pray? Oh God, I thank you. Thank you for this day that we have to come and to celebrate with one another, Lord, to hear from you of the hope that we have been given in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that as we have heard these words, Lord, that our, our spirits will be enlivened for the living of the days that we are in, Lord. Help us to be awake for every moment that you present us here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, today we have again the joy of confirmation. So I'd like to invite our confirmands as well as, as their family to come forward at this time and we will have our service of confirmation. This is one of the great, you can come forward at this time. This is one of the great moments in the life of the church. I know you've probably been a part of them in the past and have experienced uh, the, the excitement of our young people becoming members of the church. But it's been a few years, has it? Our, our world has been a little bit derailed. Um, as a pastor, it was, it was, I had a confirmation class that was supposed to come in in 2020, and we finally brought them in in 2021. And that was
God is a good thing, but it, it, this has been the next class that we've been able to offer, we've been able to offer. And we want our young people to know, we want young people to know that we want to be faithful uh, unto the vows that were made in baptism, and we want to continue as a church to support and encourage your faith journeys to bring you in to the fullness of life in our church. And so it is a great joy, once again, to have Confirmation Sunday here at First United Methodist Church, and we celebrate this greatly today. So, This is the lay leader of First United Methodist Church of Wyandotte. It gives me great joy to present Lauren Ann Huber and Heather Ann Muse to the congregation for confirmation and full membership into the faith of Jesus Christ and into the life of First Church. They are both baptized as infants, have been brought up in the church, and are now prepared to make their own confessions of faith. Heather and Lauren, can I have you turn in towards me? On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you in the presence of God in this congregation renew the solemn vow and the promise that was made at your baptism? And so you answer, I do. Do you turn truly and earnestly repent of your sins? So you answer, I do. Do you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament? And do you promise, according to the grace given to you, to keep God's holy will and commandments and to walk in the same all the days of your life as a faithful member of Christ's holy church? So you answer, I do. Amen. At this point, uh, that's right. we are going to allow our young people to give us a brief profession of their faith here um, today. So, Lauren, could you do it first? Could you face the congregation and share with them a few words about your faith journey and what brings you uh, to this stuff? Um, so, growing up, like everyone in my family is a pastor, so I Religion, it was a big deal, but it kind of just felt like something that was a given. Like, it was a ton of stories, a ton of events at church, and I feel like through confirmation, like, I really dived into my journey of faith, and I learned more about it, and I realized that this is, like, a very forgiving and accepting and loving religion, and that is something that I really admire about it, and that's why I really like that. Professing my faith today. Thank you, Lord. Can we give her a hand? My journey to faith all started when my grandmother passed away due to cancer complications when I was five. When we first moved back to Michigan, Marilyn Rose told us about the amazing vacation Bible school camp, and that was the summer of 2015. During those times, I met inspiring people like Ms. KK, Ms. Robin, Ms. Penny, and many more. They all make me who I am today. Without the Lord, I never would have met them. <clears throat> but my faith really started to grow in 2019 when Ms. KK was there, teaching me and guiding me when the Lord's work, teaching me and guiding me the Lord's words when times were tough. But at the end of the day, all this was down to my constant prayers and sad or confusing times and good times. I knew the Lord was there. It also helps knowing He's going to be there no matter what. And having my faith is a gift that can never repay my parents back for giving me. So thank you all for helping me and guiding me. This has helped me on my journey to the, with the Lord. Well, it has been my great joy to get to work with these students in January. Uh, we've had a, a class, it was sort of a quick class, but we met many times and we uh, had many conversations about faith um, and it was a very great time. It was exciting to hear what God was doing in each of their lives. We went on a field trip, we went out and checked out how other people worship God. Um, hopefully that uh, inspired us to see what happens here at our 
wonderful church when we came back here. Um, but then, uh, then we had a moment also after that just to talk about um, how the faith, uh, how we're ready to take that on as our own. And so, um, as the pastor here at my university, it's a great joy uh, to say that I know that these two are ready to come forward for confirmation this Sunday. And so, why don't we um, have another? Why don't you stand off the side just a little bit there? Heather, if you could kneel here at the altar and let's have mom and dad come, uh, if you would lay your hands on Heather. Heather and Muse, remember your baptism and be thankful. The Holy Spirit worked within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You want to stand up, Heather? Lauren. Lauren and Uber. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Lauren, may the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, that you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ all the days of your life. Amen. You want to come back in around again? Well, one more question for you. As members of Christ Universal Church, we be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen her ministry. So you answer our will. And to the congregation, I ask. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate? in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service. If so, will you answer, I will. Amen. And members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase Heather and Lauren's faith and confirm in both of them their hope and the perfect love uh, that is in them also. We Confirm that also. And when you respond, we rejoice to recognize you as a member of Christ's holy church. And we do welcome to this congregation of the United Methodist Church. With you, we renew our vows of the Lord by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. With God's help, we will support our That's the love of God. You may be established in the 
We have a certificate of membership to welcome you into the life of the church. So congratulations on all that you have done and that God is doing in you. And welcome into the life of the United States of the church. We also have a few, couple little gifts that we hope will help you to remember this day as you go forward from this morning. We pray God's blessing on you. And again, Heather, we welcome you into the life of our church. We congratulate you on your uh, all that God's doing inside of you already. And uh, again, we welcome you and thank you for uh, hearing God's call for you on your today. Shall we give them a hand? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born and conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth to the, at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the ca Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please rise and join us in our final song, You Are Mine.
I hope everybody will come down to Fellowship Hall and enjoy the special reception that we have prepared for our confirmands and take a moment to greet them and welcome them into the life of our church. I will not be at the back door. I'm going to head up the hall um, and be down with the confirmands in Fellowship Hall. So come on down that way. Shall we now receive our morning benediction? Awesome and holy God, we thank you for the time that we have spent with one another here in this place, Lord. It has been uplifting. It is a joy to watch our youth, our young people, Lord, come forward to profess the faith as their own, Lord, to begin that journey that you will lead them on, Lord, the great adventure. We pray your blessing on both heaven and on Lauren. And the vows that they have made, and Lord, we pray that as they live the mouth, that it will bring great joy and love into their lives. Now, Lord, as people of faith, we thank you for the love that you share with us. And we ask, Lord, that you now send us forth from this place and be a light in this world. Send us out in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.